Ruben in Greencastle, Pennsylvania. See more better with freeprescriptionlens.com. And today I'm going to cut your prescription lenses with Crizal Alize for your new Oakley 5137, which is the cartridge in the 52 eye size and the satin black, which happens to be color 01. Let me take everything out of the original packaging as Oakley sends it. Come on out, come on out. You know you want to come out. It's got stage fright. It's nervous. Look, the junk mail's coming out. All right, I'm going to force you out. Force you out. There we go. Your Oakley hard case. Your Oakley sock, which also doubles as a cleaning cloth. And the star of the show, the main attraction, this is the Oakley cartridge. And again, model number 5137. The color 02. I'm sorry, excuse me, 01 and the 52 eye size. Really cool thing. Look at that hinge there. No screws in there. Pretty cool design for a spring hinge, if you ask me. But let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to take out your original demo lenses, one of which says Oakley. And let's go ahead and program your shape into the computer. It is the... I'm going to put that on there later. You're going to be Secret Agent 693. Let's go ahead and program this. So years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, it's going to be programmed into the computer. You don't have to mail me your frame. So let's go ahead and take your frame, put it in the tracing element of the blocker, and hit Start. A little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing exactly the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. In just a moment, the shape's gonna pop up onto the computer. Go ahead and put the scissors away. Go ahead and raise that back up. Just put some new ink in it. Get your lenses ready. Now your pupillary distance is 63.5. That is the shape we'll be cutting today. The Royal Wee. You just sit there and wait for me to cut them. How's that sound? And move it on to the next screen. Your PD, as I mentioned, is 63.5. I don't have a 0.5, so I'm going to put it at 31.5, which is half of 63. I do want to raise the optical center height up a little bit on these. And we're good to go so let's go ahead and get your lenses prepped your right eye reads minus one minus 50 at 126 minus one minus 50 at 126 and let's see this is the right eye let's go ahead and mark this you're going to get the original packaging knowing that you're getting the Crizal Alize lenses that is the right let me mark that as Crizal Alize Take the lens out. There's a little protective sleeve on the front of the lens that protect the lens from when it's being shipped to me. So, take that off, put it in, put the power drum, and let's make sure everything's on zero. Let's turn it on for starters. First one of the day. Need to get these out quick, because last pair is in, in repair. So, hanging together by a thread. It's a metal thread, but hanging together by a thread nonetheless. That is on minus one. Let me check your astigmatism correction. That's looking good. Then I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. It's always that third dot. Never wants to act well on TV. And this is the right lens. In fact, let me go ahead. I always like to use red. I can't tell you why, but it's easier to see. This is the... Come on, pen. Come on, pen. That is the right lens. You're I'm trying to put these back wrong. Your left lens reads minus 1, minus 75 at 70. Minus 1, minus 75 at 70. Let's put it back on the minus 1. Let's take the lens out of the protective packet. Take the laminate off the front of the lens. Rotate the lens until the spherical power comes in clearly. Check your astigmatism correction. That's looking good. Let's put the three dots on there. Oops, 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 come on three dots, come on three dots. And this is the left lens. Put that cap back on. This is the left lens. Minus one, minus 75 at 70, minus one, minus 75. And the reason why there's two numbers, I'm highlighting the lower number. There's two different ways to write the prescription. You can do it in plus cylinder, which is on top, or minus cylinder. 
and I do everything in minus cylinder now. Of course, everyone does. That's they used to put the astigmatism correction on the front of the lens. Now they put that's when it was a plus. They moved it to the back of the lens. That's when it became a minus. So that's why the minus is highlighted on there. Oh, and if you missed any of that, let me recap. I'm going to recap with the yellow today. Okay, so put that pen back. You will be receiving the original packets. So where's your right lens? Here's the right lens. As I mentioned, I don't have a 63.5. I have a 63, so I'm going to put it on there, and I'm going to move that ever so slightly this way to increase the size of the pupillary density so we get 63.5. Everything's lined up. Almost everything's lined up. Clean up as I go. I need to put two double-sided adhesive stickers on what I call a block. This is what's going to attach to your lens while it is cutting. So let me grab two of these. I'm going to stick this onto the first one. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Now on the back is a magnet. That's going to do its job twice today. The first time is right now. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. So it stays in place. Put the line everything back up again perfectly. Move that a half a millimeter over that way. A quarter of a millimeter because I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Hit the button. The arm comes down and places the block onto the right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the unright lens. Just like me, I ain't right either. Line up the magnet. Grab the L, which is Latin for not right. I think it is. I missed that class in school. Normally, I would go dead center in that bar. These other two dots tells me that it's lined up in there perfectly. I'm going to move that over just a hair, a quarter of a millimeter, giving me a total of half a millimeter for both lenses. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. Now, this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your own kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home and you won't need this guy with the two thumbs and bad jokes to cut the lenses for you. Now, if I could find my flashlight. Hey, flashlight. I've got a smaller one. I just can't find it. The actual cutting wheel is over here on the far left. It's gonna. It's a diamond crusted wheel. It's going to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center that has that valley. That's what's going to put the V-shaped channel onto your lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now I'm going to go ahead and wake up the computer. This is job number 693. You are secret agent 693. That is the shape we'll be cutting. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that. I'm not going to polish the edge of your lens because it's not going to be seen in this frame anyway. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens. I'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. I'm going to go ahead and press the block on there firmly. Now the magnet's going to do its job a second time today. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck. Or as I like to call it, the Charles. Because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. I know, I know. You've heard it before. You're going to hear it again. It keeps getting funnier every time I say it. If you notice, I would have cleaned all this off. But I didn't expect to have company coming over first thing in the morning. So I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is started in every language. The door closes. The clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around tracing the shape now. And the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, which in your prescription this frame should be very minimal. So if you see light flickering in the background, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust. As it comes off the cutting wheel, polycarbonate lenses cut dry or plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet. Now water will spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that you may begin to see forming on the edge of the lenses. So as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. These are the Essilor brand of lenses with Prezol Alizé. Essilor calls their polycarbonate lenses airwear because they feel they're as light as air. The polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses. The same type of material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones. As well as the same material that OSHA makes people wear in their safety glasses to protect their eyes. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. 
We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin there in Greencastle, Pennsylvania, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that you have to reapply every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. The other nice thing about your lens is they are aspheric. AS stands for aspheric, which simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is completely round. It bulges in the center. That's what most people will give you because they know that you don't know about this. Aspheric simply means not spherical, so it's flatter. Not only is it thinner and lighter, which is one attribute of the lens, but that front curvature of the lens is flatter as well to fit in today's flatter curvature frame. So it's going to give you a much better cosmetic look as well as giving a wider field of view. Now the other nice thing, you got the, you upgraded to Crizal Alize, Alize, which has a very strong scratch coating. Anti-glare is three features in one of the first features that reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights and such. It also goes by the initials ARC, which stands for anti-reflective coating. So when someone, it reduces reflection. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. They see just your eyes, so it makes for much better eye contact. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash or if you take a selfie, you won't see the reflection in the lens. Now, the third feature that I like is the practical side, is that it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating. The machine that applies the Crisol Anti-Glare costs well over a million dollars and it takes over 24 hours to clean and then vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. So because of the time and the investment, they put the industry's hardest scratch coating to protect your time and investment. Now a little lever has come out. At the end of that lever is a spinning wheel, something you would find on a Dremel tool. That's what's defined what's known as the safety bevel. It's a very very fine grit of paint sandpaper if you will and it's going to smooth out the back surface and any rough edges left over from the cutting surface or the cutting process so in just a moment i will open this door with my mind if you like that i can do other things with my mind i can melt ice with my mind i can it just takes me a while but i can do it i just got to stare at it and then it'll melt so Make sure there's no schwarf, no optical sawdust on the back surface of the lens. I am going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, which is my red handle. I'm going to rotate it until the screw... I try not to take the screw all the way out. Let's see if I can pop it in. Again, these are unbreakable lenses, so I have that advantage. And pops right in. And I'm going to tighten that down. Righty tighty and we're in there tight no gap where the screw closes so let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens flip that over to l put the magnet in there where it lines up with the chuck the charles the chucky baby hit start which is the green arrow again the door closes the clamp shuts and then at first the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame and you can see as it's going around tracing the outline of the left side of the frame now and just like before, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to make to give you the least amount of edge thickness possible. And look at that, no edge thickness whatsoever with your prescription in this frame. Metal is always more susceptible to showing edge thickness, but you have none in this frame. So, but that's why I use the thinner, lighter weight, aspheric lenses. So I'm going to pop that off. Use my hand-approved drying technique. Put the block back in there. Let's go ahead and put that one on top, shall we? Hey, hey, let go of the case. Let go of the case. I'm going to come down here to the lensometer, spin the fine tune knob back to 126. There we go. So I'm going to put it in just above that black dot. And read the power, and I am getting minus one now the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter spelled d-i-o-p-t-e-r it starts at zero which we in the industry call plano which people in texas call a city and it goes up in quarter increments from there so 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 one so you're on the fourth rung of the ladder you need four steps of far-sighted correction you are nearsighted with your glasses off everything is much too large that's why there is a minus sign your lenses will minify down 
the image that you're looking at to the correct size. Now, once it's the correct size, it may have some fuzzy edges. That's your astigmatism correction, also known as the cylinder, which goes by the abbreviation of SIL. You have two steps of astigmatism correction. So uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So think of it as a fine two knob. You have two curves on your eye. One curve, which is minus one, and then you have a second curve, which is minus 50. And it's how we line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp. Just like a fine two knob. We're going to that knob starts at zero, goes to 90 to 180. We're going to turn that knob past 90 to about 126. Um, let's go ahead and check that. And we end up at minus 150, exactly halfway between 1 and 2. Why is that? That's because if someone had borrowed a dollar from you, then they borrowed another 50 cents, they would owe you a dollar 50. That's where we're at, 150 in the red. Now, your left eye, same amount of farsighted correction, but you need a third, one extra step of astigmatism correction in your left eye. So we're going to end up with a final value of 175. Now, this last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. And those of you at home will, in the in the field will argue with me and tell me it's actually 1 to 180 because 0 and 180 are the same number. But the first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This is an arbitrary number that could be anywhere between 0 and 180. I know I didn't say 1 and 180. I'm, I'm picking a fight today. So, we're coming down here. Let's see where your lens is at. We can leave that down there. We'll need that there. So that lever's come out, we're putting a safety bevel on that rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. So, Reuben, I want you to open the door with your mind. Reuben, pretty good. First day on the job and you're already doing it. For everyone out there who believes in telekinesis, raise my hand. What? I, 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 it must be working. Okay. It's real. There's proof. Science. So, let's go ahead and do a little bit of Lefty Lucy. Hopefully, you know what? Let's go ahead and take it all the way out this time. I'm feeling, I'm feeling dangerous. I don't want that screw to pop out because then I'll have to be... If it bounces on the counter, let me put that there to try and soften the blow. Should it bounce. But it just means I would have to crawl around on the floor... And Ruben, you didn't pay me enough to crawl around on the floor while making your glasses today. So, how about if I just don't have it fall out? We're going to do righty tighty till that tightens down. No gap whatsoever. Let's go ahead and take the block off. Dry that off with my hand. My hand approved drying method. Now, let's go ahead. Where should we put this on there? Where should we put Where's a good spot? Well, there's a flap there. Let's, let's push that one down. There we go. Come down here, put it in above that black dot, which is the optical center right there above your pupil. We're going to turn the fine two knob to 70. Come on, 70. Put it in above that black dot. Read the power. I'm getting minus one. Minus one. We're going to check the, your three steps of astigmatism correction. Minus 175, exactly one tick mark away from two. I couldn't have done a better job if I had cut these lenses myself. So your pupillary distance, 63.5. Turn the card around. I'm going to place the PD stick against uh, my thumb on your right lens. Then we hold it up to the left lens. We're getting 63.5. How about that? The magic of science. Every craftsperson knows their tools. So, again, you're going to receive the original packets, verifying that you did get the Oakley Crizal Alizé. Now, this is the point in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mention that when you get these in the mail... There is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. Let me demonstrate again. Oh, you like that? One ear is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop by your local shop or where you had your eye exam. And just tell them if it's, you know, just in the possibility, if it's too loose or too tight or if it's high on one side. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points, oop, I missed a spot. I missed a spot. I see some ink down there. Come on, you. Come on, you. Don't be difficult. Of course, once you know it, first one of the day. 
clean over here, clean over there. But standard alignment is also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them down, press down, there is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. For those of you keeping score at home, I'm wearing the Versace 3245 in the blue-silver color. Now let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. Flip that over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and that neither one is askew. Now I send out a selfie request to have your picture on the website. Ruben, I'd like you to keep me in mind. I'd love to be able to put your picture on the website, but also send out cleaning instructions, not only for your frame and lenses, but for your Crizol cleaning cloth and the cleaning cloth that I provide. So the, and your case and your Oakley cloth. So those two will last you for years. So when you get these in the mail and you see there's a wrinkle and a crease in here, you know it works. I field test every cleaning cloth before I ship it. Besides, why should I take mine out of my pocket? I'm going to use yours. It's brand new. At least it was up until now. But when you get these in the mail and you see that wrinkle, you know it works. So this is what your lenses look like. Oh, I see one more spot. want to clean. There we go. There we go. So that's it. If anyone has any, well, if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. You can follow me on Twitter as freerxlenses. If you need to email me, you can contact me through the website or you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or better yet, leave a question in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer it there. So Ruben in Greencastle, Pennsylvania, hope you enjoyed watching as I cut. Crizol Alize prescription lenses for your, your new Oakley 5137, the cartridge in the 52 eye size and color one, the satin black. I'm Seymour Better. Now, as you can tell, that's Mo Better, and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.